you guys about something a little different. I want to talk about threats. Those of us uh, who are in business over the years has always been familiar with competition. You know, we most of the time we think we know who are threats and who are uh, manufacturers and who the uh, threats to our business are. Um, but one of the things is I want to, uh, first of all, before we start, I want everybody to kind of think a little bit about what is your typical image of the biggest threat to your business, whatever your business is. Right? Just get that image in your head. Just visualize that for a second. So now that you have that image in your head, hold that. I'm going to play you a little video. How did you decide to become a hacker? <laughs> well, I'm not really sure what it means to become a hacker. That's like some guy in a hoodie who types really fast and stays up all night writing code and cracking passwords. It's not me. I just spy on people and see what makes them click. It's not a bad job. Mark Hanning, CEO of Qualicart, set to report earnings after their blockbuster IP. So you consider this a job? I put a lot of work into this. I'm not lazy. It takes research to figure out the key players, learn all about them, their families, their friends, what they care about. You have to understand the company's organization. I get a lot of my information from the sales department because they're always so quick and eager. They're hungry. People trust too easily. They don't look at the details. I do. Details matter. That's what I'm good at. It has to look completely believable. It has to look familiar. This is where research is important. It's not some generic piece of spam. It's an email from their boss with their company's signature. It's written in the voice of the boss. It's what he would say if he were writing this. What about the malware itself? How does that work? Somebody else out there already wrote all the code that does the actual attack. I'm just using it in the attachment. My skill is in my ability to get a bunch of people to click on that attachment. I always wonder what it's like when the whole thing unfolds on their end, when the panic sets in. Please leave your message after the beep. Hey, this is Rajiv in finance. Call me as soon as you get this. Something's up with my laptop. I can't hey, are you working way into the office? Something's going on with our file server. Yes, uh, Karen and HR, our, our benefits dashboard thing's really slow. We're getting calls from users on it. Can you call me and get this? Apparently, there's a malware attack targeting our main... It's ransomware. They're holding us hostage. We're locked out of everything. I, I can't even check my phone. What about the backup? That will take days. We need this fixed now. Just pay it. We don't have a choice. We're reporting earnings in two hours. But how do we know Just that they'll... pay it. Put every single person on getting us back up and running. That's the only priority now. Okay, it's done. I have the decrypt key. We have a big problem. The ransomware was just to distract us. They got inside. They got everything. Customer data, financials, everything. Qualicart is reeling today from the news that hackers have released the personal information of nearly the 2 Nasdaq million The Nasdaq closed customers. lower today, led by Qualicart, which was down 14% on news that their recent data the breach may be far worse than the today. company originally stock fell to a new all-time low on news that CEO Mark Hanning is stepping down after what is turning out to be one of the worst breaches of personal information in recent history. Do you feel bad about releasing the personal information? All the financials? All the money that was lost? All I did was get the files. I'm not the one that decided to release them. I'm not the one that shorted the stock. Somebody else had their reasons for that. It's above my pay grade. I was paid to do a job, and I did it well. And that's what's expected of anyone, isn't it? Anyway, markets bounce back. Did that fit your image of what a uh, yeah. threat actor looked like? I have asked a question. So, um, that's a very interesting um, viewpoint. And not too long ago, you know, our viewpoint of defense against this kind of environment was, you know, that we can see what we used to call script kiddies, right? Just drive-by hacking and 
uh, and just people downloading threads and just attacking your firewall. But that's changed. In today's environment, this is big money business. The people who are the, the ultimate orchestrator of most attacks in any kind of business today is organized crime. And there is a methodology to it, and this is actually their business model. So what I wanted, you know, at, when we are in the security business, we talk about threat vectors and threat actors. And the threat actors, who you saw here, and how many here actually caught what she said? That's above my pay grade. You guys all caught that? So she is not the ultimate benefactor of the attack. She's working for somebody else. And this is what one of those organizations kind of look like. Um, in days past, we think of organized crime like the mafia or the triads. <coughs> and, you know, they are actually boots on the ground kind of criminal organization that's actually out there, you know, um, doing things like extortion, strong arm, blackmail. That still happens, except now they've gone high tech. If we were to do a group tour right now, walked into one of these organizations that is actually running this, you probably think you walked into a high-tech business or you know, technology business. You probably see cubicles around, you know, people answering phone calls, talking to their customers. The only difference is the service they're pushing and the product they're pushing is ransomware and, you know, and phishing attacks. So this is, this is a whole different world. And you know, as you saw that, you know, what FBI reported, this is a multi-billion dollar organization. And their whole business strategy is built upon delivering their service. And their service is like, if they ransom you, they want to make sure that you pay them and you actually get their service back, which is actually give you the decryption key. Because the thinking is, is behind that is really, if they don't deliver once, the word's going to spread, then anybody else is going to get ransom or get hacked. They said, well, the last guy didn't get paid, why should we uh, deal with this? So this is actually a rolling business model they're performing in. It says, hey, look at this organization. It, it goes pretty deep. You have the operations manager and you know, all the way up to the kingpin. If you look at this, there is a lot of different layers. And this flowchart, it's not that different from any high technology companies that you might be, uh, you might be buying stock in, in NASDAQ. So having said that, Uh, one of the things I want to ask you about is, and a lot of questions we get asked is, is, okay, well, we know there's a lot of threat actors out there, and there's a lot of criminals out there, but why is my data valuable? Well, first of all, it's valuable because it's valuable to you. If they crypto lock it, you're going to want to pay for it to get it back. That's the number one value. And number two value is most people also don't realize that your data is worth money to your competitors. They may not directly engage with this criminal organization, but if they get your data, they can go to the black market and approach your competitors and sell them the information. That's just something that you know, most people don't think about. Even just uh, you know, your contracts with your customers, the value of those data that is spread out to different um, competitors can really put a crimp on where your bottom line goes. So that's one layer of it. Um, so one of the things I always like to point out is, anybody ever seen pictures of the Chinese version of the stealth fighter? Yeah. Has anybody ever taken that picture and compared it to our F-35? It looks like the same outcome. And, you know, where did they get it from? They didn't hack the Pentagon to go steal those plans. They, they literally hacked out on different, le um, uh, different levels of security contractors. And compile the information together to build that picture. It's many, many layers of compiling this up. So, which leads me to the next point. One of the other things that a lot of, uh, a lot of us don't even think about is once your data gets out into the dark web, or gets out into the criminal hands, there's no getting it back. This is not a physical, tangible asset that you can say, you know, you get law enforcement engaged and you get this information back. Once the data is copied, it spreads. It's still getting it back. Once it goes in the dark web, that's now resold, repackaged, and resold again. That's worth a lot of value to the criminal who's out there hacking because that's where they're going to find where the next attack factor to come after you is going to come from. Because the little bit of information they can glean of where your previous vulnerabilities are, or maybe they can find out who your CEO is, who your CFO is. And those of us, I'm sure everybody here has heard about ransomware and phishing attacks. 
This is all public information. The more information they get, in case in point to the threat actor in our video, she says, I'm doing the research. Where is she doing this research from? She is buying this information from the open market in the dark web. She's getting this information from Google research or a multitude of different places. One of the last time that uh, I went onto one of these sites, um, I'm sure you guys all heard about all the various different security breaches from Yahoo and different accounts. There was a list of about 22,000 accounts that were what the seller was touting as valid credit cards that are active, that you can use, that are fresh, yada, yada, yada. And the bid started at $22. That's how cheap it gets. But if you think about it from a commodity standpoint, they're selling this out to thousands of people out there who are buying this information. So if you, you know, they may say, okay, it's only $22 here, but if I sell this $22 a thousand times or 10,000 times, it's real money. So once they sell this information out there, the next guy is going to repackage it, repackage it. Once you lose the data and it goes out there, there's no getting it back. So what does this mean to those of us in the front line of defense, so to speak, on the cybersecurity? Um, not that many years ago, you know, five or six uh, years ago, one of the things we always talk about, okay, you've got to have a firewall, you've got to have your antivirus in place, you've got to have good policies and get everything locked down, you've got to have good backups. Those are all still important. And, but the only difference is now those are just the absolute basic fundamental building blocks of the security environment. Because that's no longer enough. You can't do away with it, but it's still something that you need. But as with the threats has evolved, so has our ability to react to all of this. Today we bring in additional new technology um, to taking this to the next generation, and we're talking about, and we talk about endpoint security, in days past antivirus, you have the Symantex, you have the McAfee, you have the Webroot. Those are all still good platforms, but they by themselves is not enough. The next generation of security product that comes into play now is very much driven by AI. They're coming in bringing much more intelligence to it. We are bringing additional platforms such as uh, forensic tracking and also logging platforms. And more and more, all of these platforms are more coordinated and integrated and controlled and managed by security operation centers that are actually manned 24-7. They can actually stop these attacks. You can put all the best technologies out there as individual silos of information. They can't coordinate. They're not going to be that effective. And the whole point is that you've got to pull all this together and actually have somebody out there manned that's watching this and actually be uh, and use this as actionable uh, systems that are integrated together. Uh, one of the other things too, we're also doing a lot more with our client is also planning. We do a lot more disaster recovery planning, we're doing incident response planning, and a lot of this to a certain extent is driven by compliance regulations, uh, HIPAA, PCI, NIST, uh, you name it, that's quite a few people here that knows what I'm talking about, uh, that has been down that road, and as you get into more of those requirements, a lot of them all require you to have those planning in place in order to meet the uh, endpoint certifications. So, that's also part of it. Now, one of the most important things I want to talk to everybody here, and that's just a most critical point, I think, more than anything else. As with most business, the most valuable, tangible asset you have are your people. Your personnel in the company is your most valuable asset. And from a security standpoint, they can be your best asset, or they can be your most vulnerable asset. Because we can put out the best technologies in the world and put in all the platform and everything and lock everything down, but if you don't train your people to watch out for the threat factors and know where everything is coming from, that is always going to be the easiest point to have. And one of the things that you remember our videos you talked about, people like to be helpful. You know, they especially you call in the sales, you call in the customer service, they're gonna you talk to them and you just ask them for help. And they're just going to love to give you information. But that's also a gold mine of information to be mined for you to go craft your ne next phishing attack, to craft your next vulnerability attack. So that's one of the things that, uh, that we're really doing a big, uh, a big push on is advising our customers is look, we can help you put all the technologies, craft all the policies, put all that stuff in place. But one of the things you need to be aware of is you need to teach your employee what to watch out for what to do and what not to do. 
So that's uh, one of the things I want to bring out is, you know, as with uh, Days By Gone, one of the most important technology communication platform today, besides the telephone, is still the email system. And as I think I look around this room, most of the people that I recognize are either using Office 365 or in, some, in a lot of cases, Google Mail. And that's where the SaaS that we're talking about, the uh, service as a, uh, 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 rather, uh, as a service. So having that said, that's one of the platforms that you really need to think about protecting. And that leads me into introducing our next speaker, Eric Torres from Dino.